So there was a question about why the Samuel Kirchhoff model has been chosen to have this particular form. And it, it really is based upon the fact that uh, it's um, very much like the linear elasticity strain energy function for isotropic materials, except that instead of the, the infinitesimal strain, we have the, this, this finite strain measure. Okay, so really the question is why this form for Samuel Kirchhoff. Okay, it, it's just that now when you look at psi hat, remember we have uh, this form, one half lambda, right, trace E square plus one half, two mu, Okay, so if you compare this with um, the strain energy, for linear elasticity, with the infinitesimal strain. Right, but the infinitesimal strain is, de is, is denoted epsilon and it is just one half of uh, the displacement gradient plus its own transpose. Okay, in that case, then you, what you will see is that psi, uh, let's denote it as uh, psi for linear elasticity, okay, Le for linear elasticity, as a function of epsilon has exactly the same form. Okay, and this is really the reason because you take exactly the same form, just replace the infinitesimal strain with the this nonlinear finite strain measure, and you're you're ready to go. Uh, it's hyperelastic. It uh, is frame invariant because we've picked uh, E, and everything works. Uh, the only f the only trouble is that it's not a very good model for nonlinear materials. Okay, it's, it, in a sense, there isn't enough nonlinearity in it. Okay. This is the reason. And, you know, also what follows is that if you compute the elasticity tangent, right, as the second derivative of psi hat with respect to E, right, it is the same as computing the tangent of psi Le with respect to epsilon. Okay, they're the same, okay, which is the same elasticity tangent. So in a, in a sense, it is just the convenience of going to this model uh, from linear elasticity that uh, explains uh, this particular construction for it.